to the Kent Lap Podcast. Dr. Dustin Howard, welcome, my man. What's up? Thank you yeah, for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming by. I'm yeah. excited. Same here. So uh, the book you just pulled out of your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, save this for the podcast. Um, Anatomy Trains. Correct. Why'd you bring the book? What's going on with this? So this book, um, honestly, it has shaped a lot of what I've done in recent years on how I approach people, how I work with people, literally how I train people. Um, so I'm a physical therapist and personal trainer. That's what I do. And uh, it really does a great job of describing how intimately connected the body is with itself. Mm. So the body is comprised of muscle, bone, ligaments, tendons, nerves, fill in the blank, connective tissue, lots of other things, uh, lots of organ systems. But one of the most neglected uh, systems is actually the fascial system. Uh, and that's what this book talks about. Uh, it talks about myofascial lines and meridians. And, uh, I mean, I'll just pull one for you real quick. Um, and as you're doing that, what is that? What is a myofascial <clears throat> line yeah. or, or meridian? Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll just roll off this one. This is called the spiral line. Basically, it is a line of muscle and fascia. So fascia, think of it like this. I always tell people, take, the, take a piece of chicken, like a chicken breast, right? Peel the skin back in a little filmy layer. That's what you're dealing with. That's fascia right there, in essence, okay? Uh, the if you peel slimy. the skin back, mm -hmm. so then you have that little... A little slimy layer in between. Sure. Kind of okay. sticky. Yep. Now, there's, okay. there's two different types of fascia, though. Um, you have one that's the dense fascia that's the deep fascia. Mm -hmm. And it's very thick. It's very hard to change that. It takes 2,000 pounds of force to change that. Um, so unless you're, you know, put an alligator, for, alligator bite force on it, you're really not going to do much to that one. On the human bite? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It takes a lot to deform that. Um, but if you talk about the superficial layer of fascia, that's different, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have basically like the stacking of fascial layers, and it goes right up under the skin. So you got um, the skin layers, you have the dermis, epidermis, all the other fun stuff that we all learned in anatomy. Um, and then basically you go down below that, you have the fascial layers that sit right above the, the muscle. Mm -hmm. What's really cool is in muscle, we have this stuff called epimycium, perimycium, and endomycium. Um, and what that is is basically how the fascia starts to blend into the muscle, mm -hmm. okay? And then what's really, really cool is that you go down to the tendon and you have the same thing only at the tendon level. And then that blends into the bone, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so you have uh, epi, uh, epiosteum, periosteum, endo, different layers, all this other stuff as well. Layers of fascia or that's underneath the fascia? It's kind of how everything blends together. I see, okay. So it's not just like a hard, like, okay, we have a screw into the bone. And yeah. That ain't how it works. Yes, okay? I see. It's like a blending of tissue in and then that's how everything's connected, okay? Um, so it's, to the, the old model, like you think about the skeleton, right? There's screws and stuff on the yeah. skeleton. It don't work like yeah. that. Okay? <laughs> it does not work like that It'd at be, all. We'd all be beeping going no, through you'd be going like scanners. this. Like, <laughs> all right, this is all I can do. Wait, wait a minute. No, 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 it can't go that way. No. <laughs> and but that's the truth. Like if you ever tried to range a skeleton shoulder, it don't work very good. Yeah, it's true. I mean, that right? is something I've thought of before is just how the design behind the human body is it's mind blowing Yeah. because look at the fluidity of that movement. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And oh. the fact that you can go out, we were hiking in Arizona a few weeks ago and the fact that we could go out and hike for miles and then come back and take a rest, eat a burger and go out and hike again for miles. And you don't like have to like do an oil change. You don't have yeah. to inject like <laughs> lubricants into your hip. You know what I mean? Like the body yeah. just, it's its you, own natural it's system. It's so natural. It's a cra yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So the, the fascial system itself is, um, <clears throat> I always tell people, it's one of the most highly innervated sensory systems in the entire body. It really is. Um, so think of, it, think of it this way. Like if you, you can move your skin around really easy, like there are certain parts of, like say you have an injury, right? Uh, let's just take scar tissue, for example. Everybody knows, like, if you, if you get a surgery, you have scar tissue, right? You get a cut, boom, now all of a sudden you have a scar, like, say you had an ACL tear, right? Prime example, a lot of people have had those. Um, you know, you'll have the little boreholes that they do, and they put the scope in, and they do the thing. Or if you had a patella tendon graft, then you have this linear scar that goes right on the front of your, your patella, mm -hmm. like your kneecap, down to uh, the, the bone, down below that. Well, oftentimes what will happen is that scar will bear down. Okay, what's really interesting is oftentimes the scar gets neglected, and so it starts to bear down. I'll what do you, you mean bear down? Like it, it gets caught. Like so, I mean, 
basically you, you develop these adhesions under the skin that sit on the underlying tissue. So like, mm. you know, if, if I'm talking about my knee right here, mm-hmm. right? Um, if we're talking about like a patella tendon graft, like for example, I'm throw my leg up on here. So yep. You can see. Um, but basically if right here, if I have a scar there, mm-hmm. they take a bony plug out of here, bony plug out of here, and now all of a sudden they use that as the graft. But they pull it out. What happens is anytime you cut the skin open, you're going to have scar tissue, always. Um, the body has, is like, it freaks us like, all right, we got to fix this. So let's, mm-hmm. let's just chunk a bunch of connective tissue and, and everything right there because we got we to fill this void that's here now. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so oftentimes what happens is you get a little bit of hypertrophic growth in there and it will bear down, okay? It actually adheres down. And uh, you can ask my friend uh, Michael and Cassie about that. Okay. Uh, that they, uh, they're very familiar with scar tissue. <laughs> I'll leave it like that. Okay? <laughs> um, not, not that there's been any experience with me uh, yep. regarding that. No. Anyways, um, so in essence what happens is that scar gets tied up uh, and it won't move well. Well, what's interesting is because it's a highly sensory innervated uh, system, sometimes you'll have referral patterns of pain that are really like nervy mm-hmm. and real funny. The uh, patella tendon graft is one in particular um, on athletes that have had ACLs and stuff like that. If you entrap the, the uh, saphenous nerve right there, you can have this searing pain that goes. That oh, acts, I see. It almost acts like sciatica, but it's not. Uh, okay. It's a full pattern. Is the pain going down this fascia at that point? Uh, it could. Uh, okay. Possibly. It, or it could be going down a dermatome. Um, I see. Most likely it'll be going down like a, a fascia line or something like that. Mm. Another example is a lady that had a total hip. I saw her. She acted like she had sciatica. She was bent over. And she was having this excruciating pain in her buttock. And they would look at the MRI. They're like, you got a blown disc. You're about to have another surgery. She'd already had two. And I was like, something isn't right. Hmm. And then I, 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 something is my, like in my gut. I really feel like it was God, like whisper. I was just saying, hey, take a look at this hmm. um, and ask this question. Because I heard she had had a total hip. And I said, okay. She'd yeah. already had a total hip? Yeah, she'd already I had see. a total hip. Yep. And so I asked her, I said, what kind of total hip did you have? Was it, what approach? Was it the front? Was it the side? Where, where did it go? And she said it was on the front. And she happened to be bent over. So like, I'm going to stand up real mm-hmm. quick. Um, but basically, she, was, she came in like this, and she couldn't stand up. Mm-hmm. She was turned to one side like that. And that's how she was moving. She could not get out of that position. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, if it's okay with you, I'm going to actually look at your scar. Has anybody looked at it? And she's like, no. Uh, I would look at my scar. Well, let's just see. And so we looked at the scar, which is right in, like, kind of where the hip flexor is uh, on the leg. And sure enough, Like that's, how long, just for reference? Like, is this like a... So the scar, oh, I would okay. say, you know, a few Five, inches. Five, six inches? Yeah, okay. a, few, a few inches long. Okay. And um, anyway, so I went to check the scar. It was like me trying to move this table. Oh, okay. It wouldn't move. It was oh, hard. Oh, wow. And, uh, and so I took my, um, I have this, what's called IASTM tools, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. Um, that's what the, the acronym stands for. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have a silicone attachment that I use for specifically scars. Excuse me. And so we put it on there and then I started moving it and the skin started finally moving. Broke it loose. You could feel it going <laughs> under no my tool. No way. Yeah. You could, you could like totally feel it. What's it breaking it. loose from? So the that bone, fascial or? layers. So it goes oh, back okay. to the thing we're talking about. <clears throat> so because it creates that those adhesions through the fascial layers, wow. and it bears it down on the under, whatever it is underlying. It could be muscle, could be bone, could be whatever. I see. You know, it just depends on what's under it. Um, and so for her, we broke that loose, and uh, and then as soon as we did that, she's like, "Oh, that feels better." I said, "Okay, we'll stand up." I did nothing to her back. Zero. Not one. I mean, touched her back. She stood up and walked all over that clinic. Had zero pain. She stood up straight? Completely straight. She came in a little bent over, and you re- released the scar from whatever it was yep. attached to, yep. and she could stand up straight and walk around. Yep. Completely pain-free. My gosh, that's, that's yep. crazy. And that was one session. <laughs> Wow. But was that, it painful when you're breaking the scar loose? Did that hurt her? Or actually, no? No, no, no it, there's it, not pain there. I mean, okay. it, it, was, it was uncomfortable uh, and felt like a stretch kind of thing, yep. but it wasn't really painful. And she was like, actually, it kind of feels good. Mm. You know, it was kind of, I always tell people, you'll feel like a stretchy pain. 
That's what I tell people. I see. Okay. Um, for the now, does part. she have to keep working that scar yes. or else it will reattach? Or once it's free, it's free? It's, depends. But I always tell people you want to work the scar and probably for the next six to eight months, you want to keep working it daily. Um, and it doesn't take long. Yes. Okay. I have a friend who ran straight into a stop sign or some kind of a metal sign mm-hmm. at like 530 in the morning doing a workout. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is a while ago. You got a, you know, as you would expect, yep. a scar. And whoever fixed it up just told him, like, you know, just work it. Like, mm-hmm. work it. Just whenever you think about it, just kind of rub on it a little bit. Yeah. And um, so do you think that's why, like, trying to keep this, this scar free from attaching yep. and just being this permanent kind of block that's just stuck on the head? Is that why you would work that? So the skin takes a while to mature and heal. Um, so does bone. So does muscle. Anything that's had a trauma to it, it takes time. Mm-hmm. Bone, for like complete, and, and this depends on the density of the bone too, by the way. Uh, for like a bone, like, you know, say you're, you broke your ankle or whatever. It gets fixed. Now it's in a position where it can heal. Well, what we know about bone is it, it takes at least for remodeling. Now, I'm not talking about healing to where you can walk on it and all that kind of stuff. But for remodeling, it takes about a year. I see. For that whole thing, that, that whole process to happen. Mm-hmm. Bone, uh, or excuse me, muscle, skin, tendons are, are like, tendons take longer than muscle because tendons are not as vascular. They don't have a good blood supply to them like muscle does. Mm. So if you think about like, if you've ever looked at an anatomy chart on muscle, muscle is red. It's beefy, right? Great blood supply. Tendons, what color tendons? If you look at a white. Yeah, they're white. Yeah. Okay, so they don't have as much vascularity to them at all. Yep. That's oftentimes why people will get a rotator cuff tear in their uh, supraspinatus is because uh, and it's on the tendon. Uh, and they, they get a, what we call, oh, what's the term? There it went. Uh, tendinosis, which okay. are perforations in the tendon. Okay. Yeah. I always think of the tendon as almost like a rope. Like, a, like, a, like there's not much. It's like, like it's almost like, a, I mean, obviously it's still like a, it's an organism, like it's still living or whatever, but right. just sort of like there's not much going on there except it's just like a connective thing. It, it's a connection point. There is a little bit of give to it, um, and you can, you can do some off fascial release and deep pressure release to tendons and help them. And I do that on people. Uh, like if they, if they come in and they're extremely tight, only on the tendon, the muscle belly itself feels okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll do some work. I'll take my same tool, but I'll take mm-hmm. the silicone attachment off of it. And, uh, and we'll hit it. And I wish I would have brought it with me. I didn't, I didn't bring my tool with me, uh, but it's like this uh, stainless steel tool. It looks like, it looks like, it looks like a torture device, but it's like, it's <laughs> like, a, it has a hook on it. It goes back like this and they call it the Mohawk. Um, oh, okay. That's the name of it. Do you, do you hook the tendon and pull it? No. Oh, well, sorry. you can, uh, if it needs it, but most of the time what you're going to do, and again, this goes back to fascia layers and everything else. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to take that, uh, the ISTM tool and imagine this is the blade on my finger, uh, like kind of where I'm going across, but you're mm. moving it back and forth along the tendon. Uh, and you can go this way, you can go that way, you can go all okay. over the place with it. Uh, and what we find is that when we do that, we create a little bit of an inflammatory response mm. uh, at the tendon, which allows the, if there is adhesions and stuff in there, it, says, it brings awareness to the body. Say, hey, uh, I need you to come in here and clean this up. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is why about eight weeks ago, probably seven or eight weeks ago now, I got a intercoastal muscle. I don't know if it was a tear or what oh. happened, but it was, it was painful. It wasn't a cracked rib or anything, but it mm-hmm. was like a muscle, something going on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, that thing is only now getting healed. Like, yep. it took like six, seven weeks. Yep. And, uh, but I was at Major Family Chiropractic, and Michael said to get like a butter knife yep. and sort of just scrape it yeah, on the yeah. muscle in between the rib and he's you know because that would bring like circ- extra circulation yep. there and stuff like that so that's, that's what you're talking about that's it so you did istm that's what you did oh okay that you like you literally when you took the butter knife um you did istm they are very familiar with istm now oh yeah okay <laughs> did you get them into that i might have <laughs> nice that's uh, great i, I but, don't i don't well they may have done it before me but but I, what are we looking at i mean yep. for people on youtube they might be able yep. to see this like yep. there's a skeleton with these yep. So, what, what, so this is this is connective fascia tissue. Is that what this is? So, like, what you're looking here blue. is actually a fascial line. Okay. Um, so, what it's representative okay. of is fascia, muscle, and tendon, all of the above. Okay. And what we're talking about here, and this is this is really crazy, and it's really cool. Um, this is why I do my assessments the way I do them now, uh, which is 
I'll look at posture assessment first. Um, and I use the plumb line to give me a really accurate idea of where someone is standing, whether they're shifted to the right, left, look at their feet, what's going on down there and everything, because all this stuff is actually connected. So okay. if, say for instance, I had uh, a lady Monday, she was, let me, let me uh, get my brain on it here. She was shifted left um, with her head, left of the plumb line. Um, and then if you look down, all the way down to her feet, her hips are shifted. Let's see, she was head shifted left, um, hip shifted back right. And if you look down at her right ankle, her right ankle was actually pronated. And, and pronation means the foot was falling in, mm. right? It was just kind of going in. Mm. So what's really interesting is we we're able to actually, <laughs> it's crazy, but it's able to accurately identify which muscles would be weak based on her presentation, based off the fascial line here. I see. Okay. So to give you an idea of the muscles that are involved on this fascial line, so you have tibialis anterior, you have perineals here. Um, then we have the uh, tensor fascia lata that goes up into the, into, um, the obliques that then cut across. Uh, so rectus abdominis, which is the abdominal muscles, the six pack or eight pack or 12 pack, if you're chiseled like Michael. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to throw that one in there. That dude is stacked. I mean, yeah, he is. He's, yeah, he really is. <laughs> um, anyway, so you go across to the other side and then you have, uh, over here, you have this muscle called serratus anterior, uh, which is actually one of my favorite muscles to talk about. Um, because it's a, it, it's one of the most neglected muscles in the shoulder. Um, anyway, besides the point. Then you flip it around to the other side, it goes into the rhomboids and back in here, and then it goes into the splenius capitis up in the head, okay? And that shows you how you're connected all the way up. What's interesting is she was weak all along this fascial line. Oh, wow. All the way up. How she was inactive, okay? Where she had her posture deviations, she was inactive on all these muscles. Wow, Every single one of them crazy. tested weak, all of them. And, and is this connected as in like there's literally a string that goes from the ankle up mm -hmm. the side and comes around? Or is it connected in like you have muscle everywhere and there's right. just sort of a, a theme or a vein that you right. can sort of track through if you do it right? Like how, like how connected is this? It's actually, it's really connected. So um, they actually have done cadaver studies where they have dissected this out of people. This isn't like, I'll show you, I'll actually show you an example because it's actually in here. Um, and by the way, for those wondering, this is Anatomy Trains. This Anatomy is Trains okay. by Thomas Myers, Myofacial Meridians yeah. for manual and movement therapists. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people thought Tom was crazy when he first came out with this stuff. And, you know, some of my colleagues would probably be like, oh, you've gone off the deep end, dude. What are you thinking about? But truth is, it helps. <laughs> oh, yeah? I, I, I have helped a ton of people. So even in your this practice, stuff. this book is like, ooh, that's getting out there a little bit. Uh, well, I'm not in my practice. It's not, okay. getting, not, not for me. Sure. Um, yep. But for a lot of, I think outside the box a lot. Okay. It's why I do things the way I do them. Yep. Uh, is because most of the people, when they come to me, they have a lot, a lot of times they've had physical therapy. They've tried other things, or maybe they've done personal training with someone else. They've gotten injured. They haven't healed all the way back, or they had an injury prior, and now they're really health conscious, and they want to do things the right way. Um, so for me and my practice, this has been a way for me to kind of streamline and figure out, okay, the body's connected. Okay, when, when you do a lunge, right, there's a lot of stuff going on with a lunge, right? It's not just that you're working your quads. Mm -hmm. If you do it right, it's not. <laughs> If you do it wrong, yeah, you could possibly be just using your quads, but then you're putting pressure on a lot of your spinal segment joints. Mm -hmm. uh, your toe is inactive, so now you're pronating your foot in, which then could probably lead to rotation of the tibia, uh, which is the, the bottom bone on the lower, lower part of the leg, which then cause rotation in the femur, and it'll put pressure on your meniscus. Yeah, you could eventually tear your meniscus doing that. Uh, you do enough repetitions, you turn that thing into mortar and pestle, and now all of a sudden you have a problem. Dang. Okay. And, and form matters. Right. It does. <laughs> and that's like, uh, that's why I do everything with, like, I emphasize biomechanics with every single person. Most of the people that I work with and train uh, or do physical therapy, like, again, it's blended with me. I, I use those terms almost interchangeably. They're not the same. Um, but my, how I do stuff with people is physical therapy with a training emphasis. Okay. So. Yes. Okay. We get them moving start loading the body and then off they go. And I'll tell you an example of why that's important here in a little bit. Um, but biomechanics is insanely important. Your body was designed to move a specific way, right? These joints that we all have, and we have a lot of them, 
okay, I don't remember the number anymore. It doesn't matter to me anymore. So I, I just look at people like, okay, here's our movement deficits. Excuse me, here are our movement deficits. You're weak here. We need to start loading you here, here, here. Here are your goals. Like, I want to get, you know, I want to gain 20 pounds or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we start generating goals based on that. So volume of training and all this other stuff comes into play. So it's very multifaceted versus the, like, do two sets of uh, 15 reps of those ankle pumps. Right. Yeah. I could beat my head up against a wall doing that stuff. Yeah. It, it's just, it's not that effective. Yeah. But what is effective is if you look at the body as a system. Mm -hmm. You look at it as a system and program and train people and like do manual work as a system versus I'm just going to work on this shoulder. Yep. You use it as a system. Now, all of a sudden, you're making something change. Mm -hmm. So an another, I mean, I have all kinds of examples, but a gentleman I worked with recently, he had basically had a terrible shoulder arthritis, um, and uh, he just he can raise his arm past like horizontal L. And so I started looking at the fascial line. One in particular was that spiral line I showed you earlier, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and uh, and also the functional line, which is basically the opposite end of the spiral line. So I started activating him along the sp uh, the spiral line, which is the front. Okay, so we started squeezing the muscles on that, getting those to fire because he was weak there. I said, okay, we're going to fire these. We started working on those, and then we went to the back side, which is functional line, if I can find it. And when you say, like, activating the muscles, do you just mean massaging the muscles, or do you mean doing movements that start to use those particular muscles yeah. along that fascial line? Most of the time, it's actually activating and, and using them. Using the muscle? So firing okay. them with resistance, body weight only. Okay. It depends on what stimulus their body needs, because not everybody needs immediately to jump into a weight. So, yeah, I see. Uh, Anyway, so on him, we worked on this functional line, okay? For him, he was like, yeah, my, it was his left shoulder. He's like, yeah, my right hip's always been tight. I was like, oh, my God, it's your functional line. And so I stretch his glute on the right, and you can see how this crisscrosses, right? So it yeah. goes this way, it goes that way, okay? Um, so I stretch his glute, and he's like, yeah, I kind of feel that my, uh, my left lower back, or yeah, yeah, left lower back. And I said, okay. Let's, you know, let's do three at one minute holds on that. And I kid you not, had him do that. And he goes, huh. Whoa. That's easier. Fashion line. Wow. You're, you're messing around by like his hips or his buttocks yep. on, on the muscles there. And yep. that's immediately giving him a, it a sounds gain bizarre. on his shoulders. Yeah, it sounds no, bizarre. It, it, it does a little bit, but also makes total sense. Like we are a connected body. Yep. Everything makes sense about that. So this is an example of a fascial line. I believe this is yeah, it's a superficial back line. <clears throat> and this is actually one, another one of my favorite lines to work on with people. Um, because a lot of people complain of pain in thoracic spine. They, they complain, uh, thoracic is the upper back. Uh, they complain about it in the lower back. And then they complain about this funky pain going down the leg and that sort of thing. Uh, sometimes that's actually a fascial line issue, not necessarily a, uh, a nervy issue. Could be. Mm. Could be. Mm -hmm. um, and I have some different theories about what could be going on even with disc and stuff. I can't tell you if they're true or not, but I just know I do stuff on people and it works. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I don't have any research articles to give you on that. But basically this shows you kind of where the superficial back line is connected. And you can see they, they superimposed it. They took it, this, and they put it on top of the skeleton. But this was dissected off of a fresh cadaver. Uh, fresh cadaver studies are actually very, very important studies because they're no longer, they're not dehydrated, right? What's a cadaver? A cadaver, dead person? Yes. It is a, a dead person that's given oh, up so their body for science. when you say fresh cadaver, you actually just mean a person that just died? Yes. <laughs> okay. Very, very, very new. <laughs> All right. And someone like would give permission to, hey, if I, yep. if I don't make it through this or yep. if I get killed unexpectedly, sure, yep. you can do. Yep. Like, is that... I think I'm like an organ donor on my license. I think. <laughs> Does that mean I signed up to? No, no, it's different. Uh, I, I, I so this would be like for someone. At least I'm pretty sure about that. Okay, for someone to get to be a cadaver in this right. situation, they would have given specific pr permission. I'm pretty sure they would have donated their body to science. I see. Or, um, I, I'm not a don't quote me on this. I don't know. Yep. Uh, this is not my area of expertise. Yep. I have heard that people that were like you know possibly homeless didn't have anybody. Uh, everything. I don't know. Wow. I have no idea if that's the case. Yeah. So 
Don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to edit that out of the <laughs> podcast. But um, anyways, so it's basically somebody that's donated their body to sure. science for the most part. Yep. Okay. Um, but what they do is if you get a cadaver that's, you know, weeks old, well, that, that thing's dehydrated. Things aren't like the fascia itself is very water based, right? Mm. Uh, our tissues are actually mostly water based, right? You know, like was it eighty percent of our body is mostly water, mm-hmm. right? Um, so think about it: if you set a piece of meat on the counter, it starts drying out, right? yes, at least it quickly. Should. Actually, it should, unless it comes from a. a Places that Michael and Cassie don't like. Like McDonald's. <laughs> they, I didn't, okay, I didn't know if we, we were okay to say, say that. that. <laughs> By the way, at their, at their practice, they have like a, a gourmet like glass bowl with McDonald's in it. And oh my God. Are they trying to see how long it's going to stay in there? Uh, or what are they doing? I think I think it's real food, right? Yeah. I think it's it, actual oh, McDonald's. It's actual McDonald's. It's been there for, what, how long How long did you say? It's been there ever since I've been there. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I, it's, I don't. I assume they're just leaving it there to see what happens, but it yeah. looks pretty fresh, to be honest yeah. with you. It looks and like it's not decomposed it like at all. Eat it. No, it's just it's yeah. there. No. Yeah, it looks great actually. Even if it's like in a container, it doesn't matter. Like we've all had bread in a in a container. Bread goes. Pfft. Yeah, yeah. But that stuff does not. Yeah, it's, it's ugh. that's yeah. just concerning for sure. But anyways, <laughs> so the the reason fresh cadavers are important is because it allows us to get a more accurate representation of how the body is interacting with itself. Sure. Right. So um, these studies are done on fresh cadavers that still are hydrated. Um, so therefore, they're able to actually get these fascial lines more accurately. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's actually a, um, a, a course with Tom Myers where he takes you through dissection of mm-hmm. a fresh cadaver. Um, and you go through all the fascial lines, you actually physically get to see it, Hmm. um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. That'd be fascinating. (laughs) 